What's up y'all and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to talk about a place that is very near and dear to my heart. We're going to talk about Big Bend National Park. Stick around. Big Bend National Park was awarded national park status in 1935. And since then, it has remained one of the harder to get to or more remote national parks here in the contiguous United States. For reference, in 2022, Big Bend National Park welcomed 516,000 visitors, as opposed to Yosemite National Park, which had over 3.6 million visitors. So one of the reasons for this low turnout of visitors in the park is the fact that it's so far from everything. For reference, if you were to fly into Dallas-Fort Worth, you're looking at a seven and a half hour drive and over 500 miles. A little closer would be Austin, which is where I live, which is still six hours, 45 minutes, and over 400 miles. Our first trip to the Big Bend region was actually in September of 2020. So much like the rest of the world, we were cooped up in the pandemic and yearning for adventure. And after that first visit, we were hooked. So at the time of filming this video today, we've been back to Big Bend 11 times since 2020. And each time I'm more filled with awe and inspiration of this unique landscape. So what makes up the Big Bend region? Big Bend is comprised of over 800,000 acres. It's a unique landscape in the fact that it has river, it has desert, it has grassland, mountains, and on top of that, a really important designation of being an international dark sky reserve. Because of these varied landscapes, the wildlife and the flora and the fauna in this region are unlike anything else, arguably, in much of the United States. There are over 450 species of birds. 450 species, that is absolutely incredible, and a larger number than any other national park in the United States. Not to mention, you would never think it, but yes, there are bears in Texas. We've run across several of these black bears during our times hiking and driving around the park. Oh, and not to mention, there's also mountain lions. Thankfully, we've not run across these. Of all these 11 trips to Big Bend National Park and learning all that we have about the area, I would say there's three key takeaways of photographic opportunities that really top my list. We're gonna talk about astrophotography. We're gonna talk about Santa Elena Canyon and the Rio Grande River. And lastly, the South Rim. Let's get into it. Astrophotography has been one of the highlights of my photographic journey and learning astrophotography has been frustrating, it's been fun, and I've also met some incredible people along the way. So one of the things that makes me love Big Bend the most is it's so freaking dark. Beyond Big Bend National Park, there's actually the Greater Big Bend International Dark Sky Reserve, which is over 9 million acres. Everyone in that area is dedicated to minimizing light pollution. So that's to all local businesses, as well as any Airbnbs or hospitality. And all my trips to Big Bend, I have taken the opportunity to do astrophotography at several different locations. One of my favorite places to do astrophotography is overlooking the Chizos Mountains. Another highlight of astrophotography in the Big Bend region, it actually happened on my last visit. It encompassed a 2 a.m. wake up call followed by a two hour drive in the pitch dark, most of which being in four wheel drive on a dirt road, then hiking a mile to what's known as Balance Rock. Now, this is one of the more prominent features in Big Bend and it features this large phallic uh, rock, but Nonetheless, there's a balanced rock beside the phallic feature. And early in the Milky Way season, the Milky Way lines up just right 
where it peaks just behind balanced rock to make for a beautiful composition like this. Another one of the most prominent features of Big Bend National Park is if you make your way down to Santa Elena Canyon. This canyon is absolutely massive. At some points, the highest points of the wall to the base, which is the Rio Grande, measure 1,500 feet. So just standing there, you're so tiny and you're looking up at these massive walls. It's really powerful to think that water the Rio Grande River has essentially carved out this canyon over the millennia. In all my times of visiting the Big Bend, I really hadn't captured a photo of this area that I felt like I was proud of. So one of my goals for this last trip was to do that, was to capture a photo that I could be very proud of. We ventured out with our friends Rob and Ben out of Houston. So Rob and I actually waded out into the middle of the Rio Grande. It was a little chilly, but actually felt pretty good. In order to really capture the perfect angles, right? We wanted to get our cameras in line with the belly of the canyon, if you will, in hopes that as the sun was setting, you would get some nice golden rays on the walls, and then eventually, maybe a nice sunset sky. Initially, I was so disappointed because the sky just seemed like it was fizzling. There was a lot of promise, and then it kind of went away. And then all of a sudden, these pink, puffy cotton candy clouds showed up. And all of a sudden I realized in frame was also this beautiful little crescent moon. Finally, I feel like I captured a photo that I particularly love and am proud of from Santa Elena Canyon. Big Bend National Park hosts over 150 miles of hiking trails, so it's expected you get out and enjoy it. A tradition that I started, I don't know why this started back in 2020, is our annual South Rim hike. This hike is 13 miles with over 2,500 feet of vertical elevation gain, so not for the faint of heart. Most folks would break up the hike and camp overnight and carry on the next day, but we are crazy and decide to do it all in one day every year. So I mentioned some of my bucket list shots that I have been able to capture. It's been elusive. My South Rim shot that I'm dreaming of, this is an example of the panorama I'm hoping to capture. Now, in all the years we've gone and done this, which it's been three now, Every day has been a bluebird hike at the South Rim. And that's great when you're skiing, it's great when you're at the pool, but I'm really looking for some dramatic clouds or you know, a moody thunderstorm in the distance because my goal is I would love to take this panorama and blow it up on metal or some sort of print and hang it here in my office. One of the things I've absolutely fallen in love with is finding the telephoto detailed shots from this perspective. Two and a half hours, six miles in. Little slice of paradise right here. Seven hours, 43 minutes, 16.2 miles. But we did it. How many miles? So there you have it. A quick look at Big Bend National Park, one of the lesser known, lesser visited parks here in the United States, but a place that has absolutely captivated my heart and continues to inspire me with every visit. I hope you enjoyed this video. This is a little bit different than some of the videos I've done previously. If you did, let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear your thoughts. If you could as well, if you haven't already, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. Would greatly appreciate it and also a thumbs up. I'm asking a lot from you, but you know, that's, that's what we do here. Thank you as always for being here. I greatly appreciate you. And in the meantime, until the next one, happy shooting. Mm -hmm.